Hey, Laura here from The Unprofessional, and today I am going to build a bookshelf cabinet built-in here in the angled, kind of empty, awkward corner of my bedroom. So my plan is to use this Iver sliding cabinet as a base. Now I have made quite a few modifications to this cabinet. I've reinforced it to make it stronger. And I've also built a side attachment just to make it long enough. Um, but this is gonna be the base of my unit. And then on top of it, I'm gonna use 3 quarters inch plywood to make a bookshelf. First, I removed a portion of the baseboard so my cabinet would sit flush in the corner. With the cabinet in place, I measured for the base. I'm making the depth of my base 3 quarters of an inch shorter than the cabinet to account for the new baseboard trim I'll add later. I cut my base pieces and assembled it with 3 inch screws. Nothing in my house is level or plumb, so each step required leveling and shims. With my 2x4 base level, I located the studs and attached the frame with long screws. Then I set my cabinet frame on the base, checked the level, and screwed through the bottom into the base. I pre-drilled all my holes with a recessed bit so I could fill in the screw holes later with wood filler. Here you'll notice an outlet that I need to account for before I attach the other part of the base cabinet. My trick to make this as easy as possible is lipstick. With the power off, I traced the two receptacles with lipstick, put the cabinet in place, and made sure it bumped up against the outlet to transpose the lipstick to the back of the cabinet. Then I used the outlet extender to outline the shape and made a hole with my jigsaw. I leveled and shimmed the side cabinet shelf and attached it to the base. Then I added the outlet cover and turned the power back on. Then I added three quarter inch baseboard along the bottom to give the base cabinet an incorporated look, which is the goal of a built-in. I attached the trim with one and a quarter inch brad nails. I'm ready to make the top surface to sit above my cabinet unit and below the shelving unit. I bought two um, pine project panels and I'm going to do a glue up. Now this project is really stretching my carpentry skills of which I have few, but I think I can do this. It doesn't seem that hard. So my plan is to put a ton of glue on this, to clamp it down, to put a few brad nails in the bottom because that's not gonna show and then just wait. Eventually I'm gonna cut it down to size, but I'm going to do my glue up first. Once the glue was dry, I removed the clamps and set the countertop on the cabinet base and checked the level. I mentioned before that nothing in my house is plumb, so to account for the not so 90 degree corner, I used a scribe tool to mark where to cut my countertop so that it would fit against the wall with less gapping. Using a circular saw, I followed the line, then did the same process for the back. Gave it a good sweep, and it was a perfect fit. Not pictured is wood filler along the seam and a whole lot of sanding. My little countertop is done and it turned out way better than I was expecting. I did more leveling and shimming where necessary, then attached the top through the underneath side to prevent screw holes from showing. Now for the hard part, the angled bookshelf. My idea was to start by constructing a box the height of the point where the wall and slope meet and the other side extending to the ceiling and a divider in the middle. Then add the angled piece and the angled shelving later. I ripped down three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood and cut all my pieces for the first part of my box. I used a clamp to do a dry fit just to make sure that my plan would work. And so far so good. And now for a whole bunch of pocket holes. Pocket holes work great for shelving. They're a bit tedious, but for me, it's the best way to join 90 degree corners. With the last screws in, the first part was done. Now to tackle the angle. Using my ninth grade geometry skills, I determined my slope was close enough to 45 degrees to make it easy. 
I set my saw, you can see right in here, there it is to 45 degrees. Now I'm making sure here that my cuts go out this way and my other cut's gonna go out this way. So, um, and I'm measuring the length from the long end to this long end. My angled frame piece is all cut. It's pretty good. Maybe not perfect, but pretty good. Attaching an angled piece is a little bit more difficult than a straight piece. Typically, I probably would lay it down, but I have an idea that I think will be even easier and I'm gonna let gravity kind of help me keep it in place. So rather than lay it down or try to do some weird clamp standing up, I am going to just make a little edge or a ridge right here at the end. There we go, does not need to be perfect. And then on this side, just to make sure this is a little sturdier, I'm going to attach a clamp here as well. I'll actually clip it down here. Now this way, I can set this right in on the angled side. And right here. I'm using smaller screws for this, um, and I'm actually gonna go through the top so that you can't see it through the sides. Um, so I'm gonna use a little bit of glue. I think this is gonna hold really well though because of the shape. I'm also going to be attaching more shelves, so it's really going to keep everything intact. I did use a clamp here, but just to keep the front edges of each piece aligned while I screwed them together. And with that done, I decided where to place my shelves and dividers and cut all the pieces. For the small vertical dividers, I used glue and brad nails. I used pocket screws for all of the horizontal shelves. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted the dividers placed, so I tried a few options and decided I liked the staggered look the best. After all the shelves and dividers were secure, I filled in all of the pocket holes, the nail holes, and did a whole lot of sanding, caulking, and finish work before I primed. Last, I connected the bookshelf section to the base with pocket holes that I pre-drilled on the outside vertical pieces, then attached it to the studs with a scrap piece of wood that I added just above the top shelf on the bookcase. Everything was super secure and tucked nicely into the angled corner. I ripped down one by six pine trim into different widths. Normally I would pre-attach the face pieces to reduce the seams, but the angle was tricky and required different widths for each piece. The outside vertical trim is one and a half inches. The angled trim is one and a quarter inch. The inside vertical is two inches so that I could scribe it to the wavy inner corner. And all of the shelves and dividers are one inch. It sounds really complicated, but I did each piece one at a time and figured out how wide it needed to be based on the width of the last piece. I used a level and a square to line up all of my trim pieces, then attached them with 18 gauge brad nails. All right, the build is done. All I have left is to fill all of these holes, do some sanding, do some painting, put some coats of polyurethane on, and I'll be done. I spent a lot of time prepping for paint. The last thing I wanted to do after all this work was a bad paint job. And I have to say, it was all worth it to transform this empty corner into a functional angled built-in bookcase with sliding cabinets. I still need to order recessed door hardware, but as you can see, I'm already making full use of it. Hey, this is Laura from The Unprofessional. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. And if you like this content, you can head over to my website, theunprofessional.com for more.